Assalamualaikum and a very pleasant day I bid to panel of judges, teachers, fellow presenters and general audience. We are from Alam Shah Science School, Kuala Lumpur and we shall be talking about healthcare innovations and mental health anxiety management during COVID-19. Now, before we dive into the roots of our talk today, allow us to introduce ourselves. My name is Amirul Habib bin Azizi and I shall act as the reporter for my team presentation. My name is Muhammad Aidil Hakimi Bejalani and I'm to touch on points elaborating technologies and measures taken to deal with the pandemic. My name is Muhammad Nabil bin Muhammad Fauzi and I shall be explaining the impact and the situation of our beloved country, Malaysia, is in while living during this pandemic. And my name is Ahmad Idham Adili bin Muhammad Zaid and I will address the current situations regarding the impacts of pandemic from an international standpoint. With that settled, allow me to shine some light on the topic that we'll be talking about today. We have been living with COVID-19 for more than a year now. Its dangers, measures and risks are common knowledge. But how many of us know the efforts and initiatives that has been taken to deal with this pandemic? In 2019, a virus raised its ugly head in Wuhan, China. Soon, it is every corner of the world on a scale we have never seen before. Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2, SARS-CoV-2, or better known as COVID-19 today, caused some massive changes in the society. Focusing the scope to our beloved country, Malaysia, let us see what effect it has here, the inventions that have been created, and what initiatives that have been taken to minimize damages. Without further ado, please welcome Muhammad Aidil, who will be explaining technologies and inventions that have come into being in this pandemic. Thank you, Afik. Before I would like to elaborate on the points, allow me to enlarge the scope so that the differences on the development of technologies is split into two different segments, local and international. I'll talk about the local scene first. In Malaysia, an app called My Doctor has been launched and implemented in nationwide to enable the health ministry to conduct contact tracing, track total of cases in vicinity, and certain dates of vaccination. People can also update their health status. Other similar applications also come into being like Slangor Ku and Slangka in Slangor to monitor the citizens. From an international viewpoint, research into vaccine production started as early as the mid-2020s, what used to take years from studies and testing to develop products policies and practice was accelerated to mere months due to massive global funding. Names of vaccines such as AstraZeneca, Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, and Sinovac have become familiar words in the household. On the other hand, inventions after inventions have been innovated to assist controlling this outbreak. In North California, the usage of AI technology such as drones and robots to assist in data collections and medical delivery or simulation is used in treating patients. This pandemic forced healthcare workers to upskill themselves and quickly learn the trade. Since we were unable to meet in large groups, it is an obstacle for hospital workers to train and exposure purposes, especially for new workers. This technology keeps healthcare workers skill and mentality on track, even in a globalized pandemic. Thank you, Aidil. Now, let's continue with our second presenter who will touch on how the citizens of our beloved country deal with this problem. Gladly, thank you for the opportunity given, Afiq. We can all agree that anxiety and depression is seeping into all Malaysians as we speak. The distress or anxiety in the pandemic probably stem from people's limited social interactions, tension among families in lockdown together over a period of time and fear of illness, says psychiatrist Marcella Richel at the Central Institute for mental health in Mannheim, Germany. Studies and surveys conducted so far in the pandemic consistently show that young people rather than the elderly are most vulnerable to increased psychological distress, perhaps because their need for social interactions are stronger. First step of prevention is by tackling the psychological impact of the COVID pandemic in a developing country has been particularly tough, says Ms. Lee Hazarika, a clinical psychologist at Guwahati Medical College. Lots of people rely on social media such as Facebook, Instagram and TikTok to keep themselves up to date and be communicative. However, since everyone has nothing to do and slots around, 
they spend too much time this social media. However, as things got dire, there will be a hope, a light shining at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. As so other countries develop a way to aid this problem, Malaysia is not left behind. Applications such as Turn to Me and My Mind to assist people by offering them a completely free online station for counselling to any kinds of people, including young adults. Of course, there are other options too, as in the development of the National Suicide Hotline such as Befrienders Malaysia and a website of association like Malaysian Mental Health Association, MMHA, and Lifeline. Practical solutions such as taking a break from the screen, daily exercise, variants of daily routine to avoid blasted day, and getting a good rest with checking up and calling your loved one can all help. Just now, we have taken a look at how our country is faring with the pandemic. Let us take a look on a high scope which is in a global scale. Take it away, Idham. Thank you, Afi. I'll be focusing on two main groups who are going through a drastic change in this pandemic, them being students and workers worldwide. I'm going to talk about the students first. We can easily confirm that prolonged online classes cause mental struggles for students. This tendency is worrying. When students feel they cannot cope, they will simply stop turning up for lessons and be absent for the rest of the lessons. The number of lost students is increasing over the months of the pandemic. Neither students nor teachers have been prepared for distance learning and teaching. The teachers were having to learn how to manage distance learning on the fly, sometimes with less than satisfactory results. Students may not have proper gadgets or experience internet disruption and this adds to the suffering that they have to face. However, all is not lost. Students have variety of ways to avoid these problems. Finding preferred learning style can help build structured life and increase efficiency of learning. They can indulge in offline hobbies to distract themselves from the work pile. And remember to add me time to avoid from being overwhelmed. Teachers always welcome students that need extra help since we are all in this together. Students should be able to turn to their peers for help and tips and develop a solid tutor tutee into the system. Online, the resources are endless. In case where a student misses something, they can always look it up online. You can always Google it up or search for an online tutor for help on platforms like YouTube. Now, on the second scope of our topic, the workers. In 2020 to the mid year of 2021, about 81 million jobs are lost as COVID-19 creates turmoil in Asia-Pacific labor markets. Underemployment increases as millions of workers are asked to work lesser hours or no hours at all. According to our research, working hours in Asia and the Pacific decreased by an estimated 50.2% in the second quarter of 2020. Just a few months ago, we were dealing with the physical impacts of COVID-19 which was stressful to say the least. But now comes a tsunami of economic implication and disastrous mental health sequels, which some workers find hard to deal with. We need to shine light to this problem and believe that with each problem come its solutions. Those who have lost their jobs can take interest on online business. Online business is a particularly popular platform nowadays. Since a lot of people are anxious to go out and about, why not turn into a profit by doing online business? People sign up as volunteers to help at vaccination centers. Countless people put their name down to help distribute food stuff to people being quarantined or people who are facing food shortage. Indeed, there are so many people affected by this raging pandemic and at such a large scoping. I am certain, however, we will ride the storm. As Irham said, it's up to us to stop and have the upper hand in this battle. We must not be weak and surrender. Instead, we need to be resilient and adapting ourselves to the virus which will live among us in the years to come. Thousand gratitude, everyone, and stay safe.